Empathy is a skill that you develop. It's not something that you decide or you bully yourself to do more of. If you're bullying yourself to be empathetic, that's shaming yourself. So your empathy is going to be tinged with shame and judgment. Then if you bully yourself for judging others, <laughs> or you're bullying yourself to not be judgmental, your bullying of yourself is judging your judgment, which is still going to bleed out in judgment. So you would say like, that's judgment. That's judgment. That's judgment. That's judgment. So you police judgment. That's judgment. judgment. And then you would That's openly judgment. admit. I was policing her language in her yes. own judgment. In her yes. own judgment. In her How own is she policing judgment. somebody else's policing judgment? Her language with her, her judgment. Own judgment. In her yes. own judgment. In her yes. own judgment. I was policing. So the pointer is that uh, whoever is throwing out there to say no judgment and empathy, they're not teaching you how to build the muscle. They're just teaching you that you should do more of that. And the only way you can shortcut the result is by shame and judgment, which means the more you bully yourself or try to be empathetic and non-judgmental, it comes out worse because it's not authentic empathy because empathy takes work. You have to go take the time to rest and digest and investigate and stay in calm awareness to see what's happening to open be open to other people's opinions instead of just judging your own opinion just judging the whole group and saying the whole group's wrong because i just have a flashback that said this is what's wrong and this is what's right and then if anybody gives me contrary evidence i'm going to change my story so i'm always right because my goal is never to be wrong not to be empathetic because empathetic is work it's not easy that's why it's an ideal word teaching and promoting, but you have to build the skill. But essentially, if they're opposing you, you can fight back and forth here, but you can just flood them and just, you have to hold apathy. That's hard for codependence because when you get flooded, you go into your emotional flashback and it's competition. In order to hold apathy, you need to upgrade and do uh, alongside parallel sympathy. Side-by-side -side empathy, which is hard to teach. You know, that's like holding space for people. Then you're calming them and you... You're going into the feeling, empathy, into feeling. And when you go into feeling, you're trying to evoke motion. So you're trying to stir things up and increase emotion. Where if you're in a group and you want people to be safe through rules, you're actually trying to stifle emotion. You're trying to make rules to squash expression. If you make rules to squash expression, you're controlling safety through dominance and authority top down, which is continuing codependence. So it's not a safe enough group. It's actually a safely dead group if you have too many rules that block authentic expression. Because motion, emotions need to evoke motion. But one person getting emotional triggers other people getting emotional, and then people get triggered and fight each other, and then it's a mess. Yes. <laughs> That's why you have to also stay calm and centered. Someone needs to hold the space and the container. And then become open and aware to look at perspectives. Investigate. That's where we exchange perspectives. Sometimes it's contrary, sometimes it's conflicting. And you stay in the what the fuck space. Instead of saying, it's too uncertain. Let me go find my soothing mechanisms. You have to stay in the, I will keep wondering and exploring. Going into feeling. Empathy. That's the etymology of empathy. Into feelings. Not covering up feelings, that's essentially shame. 
or sympathy, using one emotion on top of another emotion. Blocking emotions. So if you investigate and you understand, then you sort through the perspectives. <laughs> sort through your perspectives, not one perspective, not one conflict-averse perspective, not one delusional utopia, everyone should act a certain way, and when they don't, I'm going to judge you maliciously. <laughs> That's also shaming one emotion on top of another emotion. So after you sort through the emotions and you gain some perspective, then you can communicate compassion with care and service and deal with the unmet needs and wants. If you jump to this care and service, you're going to be going on your own bias of your outer critic, which likes to dump your, your unprocessed shame and hate onto other people because that's more fun. This does not have to be linear. You could do all six at once, or you could skip one and go back and whatnot. But this is a breakdown of uh, a way of modeling Carla McLaren's 